What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to a new and exciting episode of the Vile Files Freestyle Edition, Vanderpump Recap Edition, and kind of like a mini going deeper. We have Mary Fitzgerald with us today. Super excited to catch up with Mary and get all the tea and lowdown and all things selling Sunset Season 6. Ooh, we're so excited. Uh, we, we have a jam-packed week for you. Obviously, hopefully you guys listened to the Ask Nick uh, episode that dropped yesterday on Tuesday. Before we get to Mary, we have to, we have to get into the Vanderpump uh, reunion episode one. Get a little mini recap for you. I mean, honestly, th- I think a lot of people complained that it was going to be yeah. three episodes, impatient, but it was jam-packed from beginning to end. We watched it twice, two nights in a row. We watched the, the live version, I guess, the, the Bravo version, and then we watched the uncensored version on, on Peacock. There was like maybe two minutes of additional content, right? Did you guys really you notice that? You didn't introduce us, so the world has no idea Sorry. who you're talking to. The household is here. Our pop culture correspondent is here. Thank you, pop culture correspondent. Natalie Joy is with us. What if it was just Nick? We like panned out. It's Nick alone in a room, just like <laughs> recording by himself. He's like his other animal. animal. <laughs> <laughs> He's like the household is not here. Uh, I'm alone like and, and I'm chirps. scared. <laughs> uh, it's just Kiki. <laughs> how's everyone doing? Mental health check. Everyone good? Derek is uh, here before he leaves the jury for jury duty. Hello. Uh, Hello. He can't talk about the trial. Trial of the century, we've heard. Crime is being fought right now. Justice. Justice is being served. served. Well, we don't know. Either way. All right. I mean, what do we think? They came swinging. And I think I was talking to Amanda about this. It's so funny to think about the fact that we're all watching this at like 7 or 9 p.m. or whatever. We're ready for the tea. This is 8 a.m. on a random Wednesday on a studio lot. And they're like have been up for hours getting glam. And James Kennedy was just ready to go. Yeah, they were at ready. 8 a.m. They were ready to guns a blazing. And guns Lisa's telling him, blazing. "Darling, stop. We have ten hours of this." And Lala's like, "I'm ready for the whole thing." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like, "That woman has stamina." Yeah, like Lala is fully prepared to engage this way for the entirety of filming. I love how they called out Tom for his crocodile tears, which clearly they were crocodile tears because after he got called out for it, he immediately stopped crying. <laughs> he dried it up real quick. He was just, he went from like blubbering and, and then he was like, all right, listen, I'm really sorry. Okay, fine. I feel like it's like soccer. It's like someone accusing you of diving and then you're like, okay, fine. And then you stand up and like walk away all fine. <laughs> like, it guys, was like instant. Did you all pick up the moment, like moments later when uh, Andy, you know, because he was basically like going down to like, hey, how's everyone doing? What's going on? And kind of introing everyone and giving everyone a minute to kind of, you know, whatever they wanted to say. And quickly, Andy was like, oh, so how's Brock? He cut his hair. And <laughs> did you guys not pick up on- the- Sandoval shows. <laughs> really? He's you know, like, a- <laughs> like, wait, you broke character just to be like fascinated that Brock cut his hair? I like- think it's like, oh, he's just such a good friend. He's just so invested in everyone. He can't help but react this way. No, I felt like for me, it's, it was like when you were growing up and if you had like a stern like talking to or you got in trouble with your parents, it was like the first kind of like question to see, like to suss out the vibes. That's what it read like to me yeah, of okay. like, will Sheena at least engage with me on a friendly level or does everyone hate me? Yeah. Like if I, if I act really interested in this, can I see he if she'll trying, be like, yeah, yeah Santa he was trying yeah, to yeah, extend the olive, hair. Olive yeah. branch for sure. Yeah. But it was really out of pocket and it just came across. It seemed as- like a, a very instinctual, like that was the real him and this, the, the arrest is like an act, you know? Yeah. Uh, can we talk about Katie and Swartz for a second? Mm-hmm. Sure. Because I know obviously most of this uh, it, reunion was about obviously Scandival, but I felt like this reunion really, in ca- episode one, really kind of made me f- kind of fully understand the Swartz and Katie of it all, the dynamic. For me, it seems very clear that, you know, we've talked about Tom being the fun guy, Tom being the guy who, you know, just wants everyone to like him, right? He, he certainly, you can't accuse Tom of not wanting to be loyal. Tom, Tom is a loyal guy. I think he has incredibly misplaced loyalty. 
right? I think he's loyal to the wrong people, and I think his his reasons for being loyal are kind of cemented in, I, I guess. Think, yeah, he's like loyal to himself, and then he picks allies based on that loyalty. I don't know if it's necessarily loyal. I think, I think he's. Well, he's definitely not loyal to Katie. Correct. Yeah, okay. but he still is. Lo- I mean, he's loyal to Sandoval. Well, he's loyal to Sandoval, and yeah, I don't think that's serving him at all. Like I think he's a loyal person. I just think he's has very much misplaced loyalty. But at the end of the day, Tom is one of those classic guys who I think Tom fell out of love with Katie. You know, when when Katie's talking, you, she even said at the reunion, she like I, she was forced to make a decision she didn't want to say. I don't know if that was an exact quote, but that's pretty much you know what she said at the reunion. She didn't want I don't she didn't want to get divorced. It didn't seem like she wanted to make this work. Tom Schwartz forced her to make this decision, which, you know, it's kind of this trope that many, many guys do where they don't want they don't want to be the bad guy. Tom Schwartz doesn't want to be the bad guy. He wants everyone to love him. So instead of doing the thing where he's willing to get Katie, you know, we always talk about you got to get if you're going to break up with someone the actual right thing to do, the brave thing to do, the selfless thing to do is to be willing to allow the person to, to hate you, to think you're the bad guy so that they can get over you. Swartz didn't want to do that. Swartz doesn't ever want to be the bad guy. So instead of just going to Katie and saying the, saying the kind of harsh thing where all, his girlfriend, all, all of Katie's girlfriends would be like, you're a fucking asshole for saying that, just be like, I don't know if I'm in love with you anymore. Because I think he just stopped prioritizing her. He stopped giving a shit. And that point where Tom Schwartz was like arguing with Katie, being like, you always have to have it your way. Just because I don't want to be friends with you the way you want to be friends, we can't be friends. And like that encapsulated exactly Tom Schwartz, where he doesn't understand. He he literally doesn't understand what a boundary means, where it's just like he thinks that he could do kind of like. When you're young, you're just like, I just want to be me and do whatever the fuck I want. And I just want people to like me because I'm a nice guy. When you get older and you're an adult and you start like having real life problems, you start developing these like non-negotiables and boundaries and be like, I don't want to associate myself with people who do X, Y, or Z because they make my mental health, like whatever. And he just doesn't understand that concept of like, hey, listen, if you want to fuck people in our group, I don't want to be your friend. And Tom like literally doesn't understand that logic of having to do something for someone you care about. He doesn't understand the idea of having to make a sacrifice for a quote unquote, a friend. And it's just, to me, that just encapsulate everything. When Andy was just like, hey, so this is your first reunion, like not sitting next to Katie, like James called it out perfectly. He was like, oh yeah. Like he didn't even consider it. Like I, I think Swartz is so over that relationship he just doesn't care. He doesn't want to consider Katie's feelings. And Katie very much wants, to, it's like, we can't be married. Like, you don't, you don't love me the way I want to be loved. So I don't want to be in a relationship with you. But like, can you have some respect for what we had? And Swartz is just uninterested and unwilling to do that. And I think he's been hiding behind the truth. The truth is, I think he fell out of love with her. And I think he conveniently is ba- playing the victim because Katie is the one who ended the relationship being like, well, I... She broke up with me type of thing. What am I supposed to do? And I think he forced Katie's hand. And it's, yeah, it's, a, it, I don't know. I've, it's Him calling the friend rule murky to him. He's like, I don't know. It just seems like the friends, like no making out in the friend group is just like a little murky to me. Like, how is it murky? There's four women that she doesn't want you that are on the show mm-hmm. currently being filmed that she doesn't want you to make out with. That's it. Five women. And two of them are in committed relationships Ariana, obviously she was and sheena so he has lala raquel <laughs> and that's it right yeah because Allie's in a relationship yeah so like how how do you not understand that it's he doesn't I, yeah no i agree with you i just think he he's thinking at such a basic level where it's just like if you can fuck other people i can fuck other people and because you're not my wife you don't get to pick and choose who i get to fuck Logically, I get where Swartz is coming from. The part he is missing is if you want to be my friend, because Swartz is claiming, why can't we be friends? He's, he's upset that they're, the way they communicate isn't what it used to be. He's, ex- he's, so, a, yeah, he's upset that there are parameters that he has to oblige to to be Katie's friend. He's like, I want to be your friend because I want to be your friend. And I want to be able to talk to you when I pick up the dogs. And like, Katie's and, like, no, this is a trans, like, this is a weekly thing yeah. that we have to do. This is not an opportunity for us to like catch up. 
I mean, but not only do that, but, but he he wants to he wants to have the option to make out with the one or two people that are even available to make out with that are against kind of Katie's rules. And he's just like, I don't want to be bound by those rules just to be your friend. And Katie's like, OK, well, then we're not friends. We're not friends. You know, and Tom's like, why not? And I'm <laughs> like, what the fuck? How do you not understand that if you want to be Katie's friend, if you want to still be friends with your ex-wife, all you have to do is not make out with a handful of people. And if you do want to make out with these people, fine. You can't be friends. It's just, which door do you want? On a similar note, I what did you guys make of Ariana and Lisa Vanderpump's exchange where Ariana was saying, like, I respect that you're a business partner to Tom and that you have that existing relationship. I to, like answering honestly, I just think I won't be as close to you if that's Well, the I case. wanted to ask you all this. Did you, the, I think a lot of people watching it thought Lisa Vanderpump was a little soft on Tom Schwartz. I was on Sandoval, rather. And yes. I guess, in, in Raquel, did you guys agree with that? Do you think? I feel like she's obviously the mother of the group. Yeah. And they're all her kids. And so I felt like everyone was attacking Sandoval. So she, like, got the protective mother bear energy and was just trying to, like, ease it. But I did hear her several times condemn him and yeah. say, you know. I didn't think it was that bad. I think a lot of people watching it don't want objectivity. They want a crucifixion. You know, I, I do agree with Lisa. Maybe Sandoval is a, is, a, is a narcissist and a dangerous person. It's possible. I don't know if Lala's in a position to make that type of diagnosis. And I think it's, it's, I think it's fair for Lisa to just kind of, hey, listen, like, Lisa is right about that. And, and Andy made a point where it's just like, Tom Sandoval isn't the only cheater out there. Sadly, you know, like, people, like, for a lot of different reasons, have stepped out or whatever. Not all those people are evil fucking narcissists. You know what I'm saying? Like, what he did was terrible and selfish, but, like, it's just hard to sit there and, and compare him to the worst person in the world or, like, the devil. Or I don't some... think she was saying that because he cheated, he's a narcissist. I think she's saying, like, it's more so about all of his actions since think, that yeah. make him a narcissist, like him not leaving the house. And well, him, that like, was, was that Ariana or Lala? Lala's the one who basically was like, he, I couldn't get him yes, to stay home. That was home. such a great line. And then the second shit hit the fan, I couldn't, couldn't get, get him, him to the leave. fuck out of the house. Yeah. And like, honestly, like, and she, and yeah, she's like, that's what a narcissist would do. Now, I don't know. I don't diagnose narcissists, but yeah, that is. That is crazy that how is, true that is, though. Yes. That really like rung for me. Like, it, they don't give a shit. Ever the whole time, the whole relationship. Then the second they fuck up and they're caught, yeah. Oh my god. Then they become a big problem. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. yeah or they like lose control in some capacity. Yeah. There's no real. Like... He's not sorry, and he says he's sorry all the time. It's like I thought Ariana crushed it. Right. Oh I don't. My I don't. Gosh. I don't like Andy Cohen's there to do his job. I get it. Right. They they have to fill ten hours. Whatever. He's got to ask these relevant questions. But I absolutely love that Ariana, every chance she got nevertheless was just like this is all irrelevant because it is because every time andy asked a question to to sandoval about like, why do you think the relationship this had nothing to do with the health of their relationship that's a whole separate conversation but andy is asking questions about the relationship that's what he opened up with he started talking to Sandoval. I think more like, I think Andy could have did a better job timing wise because the way he immediately started talking to Sandoval was to ask about like, why did he think the relationship ended? And back to like with Howie Mandel, it's just like, don't ask that question. Ask, why do you think you cheated? Why was, why did you go about, you know, lying and handling it this way? Not why did the relationship go bad? Those are completely separate arguments. So I love that Ariana was like, who gives a shit? Like, it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. You either break up or you work on it, you know? And I thought she was absolutely a rock star for handling it that way. She was so good. I also thought another moment she really shined was when asked about Raquel. And this might have, I think she said something like this in the reunion and in like the finale episode where like when asked to describe her by Andy, I think this was in the interview, she was like lost, like really like looking for an identity. And like goes on to say like diabolical and all of the very valid Sub criticism Sub about this like horrible person. But like I just really appreciated that specifically. I like yeah. thought that was a very emotionally intelligent approach to things. And I think like Ariana just seems so powerful. And like because of that, she's like 
not scared to be vulnerable in other ways. Like, I think she's just doing a really commendable job, like being really open and honest about both the things that are like, yeah, go off, queen. You look amazing. And then also the stuff where it's like, yeah, I do still feel this way or like, I don't know. No, I she she's not feeling sorry for herself. I think when you're younger and shit like this happens to you, your ego takes over and you're why me? How could this happen to me? I can't believe this happened to me. What did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? Yeah. You know, I'm sure Ariana, if you talk to her about the relationship, would be would be willing to say, yeah, you know, I'm sure at times I was hard to be around and I'm sure at times yada, yada, yada. But this has nothing to do with that. And so she is not feeling sorry for herself. She's not acting like, how could this happen to me? She's just like, this happened to me. And it sucks. And I'm fucking dealing with it. And I'm mad and I'm angry. But like, I, this isn't a reflection of me. And she is, she's not even entertaining that thought. And it comes across as so empowering and great. It's wonderful. The dress. So Stunning. obviously there's so okay. many other amazing things about Ariana, but yeah. I do think we should at least mention the dress. Wow. Nuts. Never in the history. Like, <laughs> she is sitting down for 10 hours and like not I in a, in a cutout dress and like abs are red. ripped. <laughs> like she back is straight. She is perfect. I have never watched a Bravo reunion before. This is my first this one. This is my first one. What too. an amazing place to start. Yeah. I feel very lucky. They're always nuts though, honestly. Well, like housewives, they're always bonkers. The booing. Like what did you guys think of like the heckling Lala. from day shame. one. Shame, <laughs> shame. No, I love it when anytime, like, you know, they were talking about other topics and, like, Sandoval would, like, chime in and Lau would be like, shut the fuck up. You know, like, every time he would open his mouth, it was so great. Whoever that- put Lala and James next to each other, nailed it. Yeah, oh, They're, when, like, the literal peanut gallery. Yeah. When, when uh, James was like, yeah, that didn't land for me, that was that was really good. James's commentary is fantastic. Yeah. yeah, and, and Lala's man. like, I didn't even listen. Yeah, that was. Can we talk about Raquel? Oh my god! Her like Nick trailer. is like Nick keeps saying, oh, that could be like not it's, her re- her real react. I believe it is her real reactions. She's rolling her eyes at Ariana, saying anything where she's hurt or she's like how it affected her. Raquel's rolling her eyes. Maybe it is a true reaction. I'm just when it comes to stuff like that, it could they could have been filming her for literally ten hours, and she could have been like watching the price is right but what was you know, but you know. what was her, true was when he was asking andy was asking sandoval that oh, question yeah, 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 yeah. and james kept interrupting and he was like mm-hmm. trying to fight him whatever and andy's my cards and then andy's like finally can i get back to the question i've been trying to ask and raquel's like oh my god i really want another answer to this it's like she needs the validation from him yeah. that like he wanted oh. her. And her oh. face lit up when she was mentioned by the Toms. Like, oh. lit up. That's... Like, she was When Tom thrilled. Short said their kiss was liberating. Yes. She was like... She literally... She she came herself. In that moment, she was Miss California. <laughs> no, like, she <laughs> was really... A <laughs> hundred fucking percent she was. Take your first walk. <laughs> I finally won. Yeah. If, if we are going to take her reactions at face value, and they very much well might be... Is that it's? It seems clear after watching this reunion, and I'm not shocked because Ariana talked about how like she was kind of coached by Sandoval, a, a million dollars. I don't know. I've lost bets. I've lost fake bets on this show before. Um, 50k but in the hole. 50k. I'm 50k in the hole. Yeah, I'll try to get it back for another 50k. <laughs> Are you I'm down. Don't you lost in. 50k in here. <laughs> yeah, I did. Sorry, babe. It was uh, <laughs> Chelsea and Kwame's wedding. Yeah. When Sandoval and Raquel started hooking up, he absolutely told. I know there was that accusation, you know, that you know that we're open, but I think somewhere along the line, I guarantee you, he told Raquel that him and Ariana weren't sleeping together at all. He's like, we're not having sex at all. Because there was that moment where you, you picked up on it. Go ahead, babe. <laughs> when Sheena, I guess, Lala came to Sheena and was like, I really think that Sandoval and Raquel, this, because he's been talking to her the same way, whatever. So then Sheena goes to Ariana. She's like, how is your relationship? She's like, listen, like, we've been extremely like intimate this month. Like, it's been really good. And Raquel's face was like, what? Yeah. It's like Santa Bob had been telling her. her, like, no, I've been sleeping downstairs. I'm on yeah. the couch. Like, we haven't touched. I don't even hug her. Like, there's no intimacy. He's like, like we makes... have to fuck in the guest room because this is actually my room. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> welcome. I, let's get bunk beds. I, that makes me, you know, like, Raquel's reactions or Rachel, like, they definitely, they, they seem off. Like, her <laughs> just, and... While, while we don't know if those reactions were real, we've certainly seen plenty of reactions where 
that it couldn't be edited. Like that whole scene between her and Sandoval afterwards, where she like wanted to kiss, like she was turned on, like she she was getting off. I mean, she she was into it. Like she didn't feel all that remorseful or sorry. That all being said, I have a little bit more empathy for Rachel because I do feel like with Sandoval being older and being in a position of power, being you know, a part of this franchise or show for a decade and, Ra- and Rachel Raquel being kind of somewhat of a newbie that I, I do think he had more influence and power and manipulation. And I do think he deserves more heat. And, and subsequently, I'm, l- I'm a- willing to like give a little bit of grace to, to Rachel for, you know, the fact that I guarantee there was some manipulation going on. I, I, I still think she was completely wrong and and guilty and i question her character a lot but just a little bit of grace compared to that knowing that i that sandoval absolutely was lying and manipulating uh rachel as well i mean they also have been saying for season on end that they all think that she is has rocks for brains like the elevator doesn't go all the way to the top and i just (laughs) think (laughs) and i just think that like maybe there's some truth to that. And maybe she's just like, she doesn't have a lot of uh, critical thinking or common sense maybe. And she's, she's just like taking everything Sandoval says as Bible and like, he would never lie to her. And Sandoval is just a rock star. Because if that's true, if that's true, if Tom was just like, listen, we're in an open relationship. Uh, We never have sex. We're basically just roommates, yada, yada. It doesn't make what she did okay because clearly she's best friends with Ariana. And if she thought that was true, why didn't Rachel ever go to Ariana and go, are you guys in an open relationship? But that kind of makes sense because that conversation she had at the bar at the with, night before the with Katie, no, no, no. With, that Ariana. with Ariana, Raquel had with Ariana at and Lisa Vanderpump's birthday party, where she's, she's like, "So are you guys her. like hooking up regularly? Like How your body's your fine. Life? Don't feel bad." <laughs> it's yeah, like, it's like, are you asking those questions because Sandoval's been telling you, and you're like kind of suspicious of that, and so you want to like get down to like the her truth? Gut told her that maybe Sandoval. I was I think lying. she's yeah. like TikTok, yeah. leave your wife kind of vibes. Yeah. Like, uh, like, oh, he said he would do this. He said he was do this. He's not doing it, and now she's like getting impatient. My roommate also had a fantastic theory on Raquel that I thought, where she was like, I think Raquel, because of her like upbringing and like experience in pageant, like is not really capable of trusting other women. Like, is deeply mistrustful. But it's like really deep down. And so she's not aware of it like on a conscious level. But there's this resentment that she feels because she doesn't ever like fully engage in her friendships and she's not ever to like full like feel that support from them. And so all of this like and her decision to fuck Ariana royally in this insane way is a manifestation of the fact that she was like, well, we've never really been on the same team. I've never felt like I could really let down my guard, which doesn't justify it or make it okay. It it makes you understand a little bit. Yeah. Like she like. And it's not not everyone is like good or evil. There are definitely shades of gray. I think there's still hopefully hope for Rachel. She's still relatively young. You know, that does matter. Like Tom is 40, you know, as, as James Kennedy kept pointing out. That being said, it's like they are all a bunch of cheaters. You, you're all acting a little bit righteous, given that like you all kind of fucked up. The only difference is the life partner the best the best the best friend that is and and there's that is a valid fucking point by by lala what a golden golden coincidence that his last name is sandoval and it works with scandal i mean maybe he was just destined to do this he's still pop like he's also like why is sandoval fighting with people He, he was some glamour magazine article came out about like he's ruined white fingernail Mm -hmm. polish and like tom sandoval's up in instagram like reposting it repost first of all like when anyone wants to like complain about our content and then they they tag our podcast, I'm like, thanks for thank you. Mm-hmm. He, first of all, like you're stupid for doing that, but also just like stop saying I'm sorry, but I'm sorry, but like we weren't sleeping together. I'm sorry, but like we were having problems for five years. If you were having problems for four fucking years, that's on you for not doing anything about it. That just shows how much of a coward that he is. And then the way he talked about. How he was like thinking of Ariana. Well, if she was such in a bad place, you weren't thinking of Ariana. You were thinking of yourself. Stop him, implying that you were thinking of anyone but yourself. Him assuming that he would tell Ariana this world shattering news and then she would just go into her interviews and talk about something about her. And she would just like never talk about them. She wouldn't like out it. She would just like 
he didn't want her to have to go into interviews and like talk about her normal life when like she had just found out that he had been having an affair on her. Oh, but then in the flashback with with Kristen, it was a crazy how identical it was. Just uh, we weren't sleeping. He has like these breakup like uh, if I would cheat on someone, he's got a playbook of like excuses he makes. We weren't sleeping together. We weren't connect. Like cheating will always be an option for Sandoval. When he's in a relationship with someone and he's not getting what he thinks is that he deserves in that relationship, he will be too afraid. Swartz, Swartz will get you to break up with him. He will make you pretend that he's happy, and but he will just stop loving you. Sandoval will just start fucking someone else. Neither of them will just have the guts to say, hey, listen, this isn't working for me. I don't think we should be in a relationship and allow that person to hate him and say all these things and break up with them and be the bad guy. They will just try to figure out a way to avoid that. And they're just, we, they're just cowards. I just. When he's having that conversation with Raquel at the, fi- the finale and she's like, I just can't help but think like, am I stupid? Because are you going to like cheat on me? And he's like, yes. God, no, I would never. Absolutely. I was so proud of her for asking that question. And granted, the bar is low. Yes. Bar is in hell. Very low. <laughs> and I'm ultimately not proud of her as a human being thinks she has a lot of work to do. But the fact that she was even thinking that way, I was like, OK, yes, let's keep this going. I, I want to believe there is hope for Rachel and Swartz. I've given up on Sandoval as a human, but lost, Swart- cause. lost cause, but Schwartz, I just, he's, if he can just grow up and realize that he, if he wants to be loyal, he's got to, he's got to understand boundaries. He's got to, and I love that part. Where was it? Was it Lisa who called out Swartz for like, say something that has some fucking weight behind it. Like say, like take a fucking stand like Katie does. That's what I love so much about Katie or Lala. Whether I agree with everything they say, it's not the point. They're willing to like, take a fucking stand for what they think is right or wrong. And like Swartz is always trying to figure out a way to say something so that no one's mad at him. And it's just like, you're 40 years old. It gets fucking old. And by doing nothing, it's like life has finally caught up to him where you realize trying to like appease everyone, you eventually hurt the people you claim to care about the most. Anyways, great place to end it. We could talk about this forever, but we have to get to Mary Fitzgerald. We have, again, such a great week lined up for you. Let's get to Mary. All right, all you busy people out there who still want to eat right and just don't have the time to just go to the grocery store and pick out wholesome, good ingredients and then make dinner and clean up all that stuff. HelloFresh is here to save the day. That's right. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and most importantly, affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. We love it when people come together to make something bigger and better. And every plate is now owned by HelloFresh. So we have a wider array of meal plans to choose from. There's something for everyone. This May, HelloFresh is celebrating Asian, American, and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Try limited time authentic recipes created in partnership with Chef Serbi Sani of New York City's Tagmo restaurant and enjoy a cultural taste tour right in your kitchen. Check saving money off your growing to-do list with the help of HelloFresh. HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery store shopping and 25% cheaper than takeout. You do not have to be a whiz in the kitchen to make the gr- delicious HelloFresh meals. Most of their meals you can make within 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, so many great options. To get your HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com slash V-I-A-L-L-16. That's Vial16 and use code V-I-A-L-L-16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. 16 free meals? Is that a misprint? No, it's not. It is true. That's right. So again, go to HelloFresh.com slash V-I-A-L-L-16. That's V-I-A-L-L-16 and use code V-I-A-L-L-16 for 16 free meals. Meals plus free shipping. Hello Fresh, America's number one meal kit. Sundays, all you pet lovers out there, make sure you're feeding your furry friends the highest quality food that you can because, hey, what you put in your body matters and what you put in your dog's body matters too. Sunday is air dried dog food made from a short list of human grated ingredients that's right it's amazing what how crappy so many of the dog foods out there are and we all love our furry friends so make sure you show your love by feeding them the food they deserve 
Besides USDA beef and all-natural chicken, you will find digestive aids like pumpkin and ginger plus disease-fighting antioxidants. Dog parents report noticeable health improvements in their pups, including softer fur, fresher breath, better doo-doo, and more energy. Jeff's a huge fan of Sundays, and we love it because we love Jeff, and we want to make sure he is getting the best possible ingredients in his body. Make sure you're doing the same for your pet. Sundays cost 40% less than other healthy dog food brands because Sunday doesn't waste money shipping frozen packages. Instead, they spend on what matters, sourcing the best all-natural ingredients before your pup. Allie is an amazing dog mom and is very intentional about what she gives Kiki. And it's great because if we ever have a night where like we're in the office a little longer than expected, we can have Sundays for dogs right there. It can keep for ages. And so in a pinch, it is always available as a great meal option. We worked out a special offer for our dog loving listeners. Get 35% off your first order of Sundays. Just go to sundaysfordogs.com slash V-I-A-L-L and use code V I. A-L-L at checkout. That's Sundays, S-U-N-D-A-Y-S-F-O-R-D-O-G-S dot com forward slash V-I-A-L-L. Upgrade your pup to Sundays and feel good about the food you feed your dog. Mary, welcome. Hello. How's your heart? My heart? Yeah, we ask all our cat- questions <laughs> that. Yeah, I know it catches people off guard. <laughs> people usually feel like, uh, feel like they should warm up to we get deep, but we like to just right off the bat. It's full you- of love. Full of love. Oh, yeah. We love that. Yeah. Why? Uh, because I have a pretty good life. There you go. Got a lot of people around me that, that I love very much. And, okay. Yeah. Well, that's so, would love to hear that. <laughs> um, you are in the throes of, of season six coming out. Uh, yeah. Congratulations on a very entertaining and wonderful season that people seem to be enjoying it. How do you feel about it? What's it been like for you? Do you like kind of going into all these seasons? Do you have um, almost like a ritual of how to prepare for what the inevitable like fallout is and things like that? How do you handle it? And then how do you kind of how does that affect the group and things like that? The dynamic when seasons drop, because I know like, you know, you can film it and everyone's fine, but then like inevitably airs and you don't get this you don't even know i'm assuming everything that even is going to be played and then how does that go well i normally go into each season we get a break in between sure um and so i go in very you know rested and positive and and uh you never know what's going to happen really and this season was definitely shocking i thought it was going to be so much easier uh, because Christine's gone and, and I was like, this is going to be a breeze. It's going to be drama free. And Nicole has been, she's one of the new agents. Mm, yeah, well, we're... she's been an agent for a long time at the Oppenheim group, but a new cast member. And she's been a really good friend. She actually officiated our wedding. Yeah. Yeah. We, we yeah, saw that yeah, on the yeah. season. Yeah. Yeah. So that was not expected. Not expected. Not expected at all. And things just started happening and I'm like. I, I would just sit there like, what what do I say? What do I do? Like, There's so many aspects of it that Jason was the only one aware of the situation. And he was just like, don't don't bother me. And everyone wanted me to answer. And I'm like, I don't have answers. So what, I need I need Jason to tell me what happened. As someone who is <laughs> friends with Chriselle, yeah. friends with Jason, you're What's the proper title? You're you're running the office. Yeah, I'm vice president. Vice and president. And okay, and very yeah. important. You're running the the <laughs> show. Nicole officiated your wedding. Mm-hmm. You're you're kind of like the a third party. Yeah. What, how did you see it play out? Like, why do you feel like Nicole chose to bring up the past? Uh, obviously, Chriselle has been very kind of outspoken on social media, saying like, "You're doing this for the storyline. You're doing this for Cloud. This is this is kind of coming out of nowhere. Why are you doing this? Yada yada." I think you know me, and I think a lot of people. I'm not familiar with the ins and outs, but I yeah. guess on face value, I, I guess I would be upset or frustrated if someone was taking credit for my work. But maybe there's more to the story that meets the eye. Could you shed some light on <laughs> why what's going on? Oh, I mean, it was a long time ago, yeah. and I do remember Nicole getting upset mm-hmm. um, because Jason brought both of them on, and basically he. When you say Cr- them, I'm sorry, Nicole and Nicole and Chriselle. Okay, yeah, yeah, and so you know, in the beginning, Nicole did do 
more work on it. And he brought Chriselle on because she was newer at that time and where it was kind of a learning thing for yeah. her. And and Nicole was the one that got paid for it. And and but I guess Chriselle posted it on Instagram like it was sold. And Nicole found out it was going to be on the show, too. And she just got really upset back then. Jason's like, you need to chill. Um, This was my client and I brought you on. So be thankful. And I did not know it got squashed because I, I talked to her back then. So, so it was Jason's else, kind of it was Jason's connect, so to speak. Jason's it was Jason's client, client, and then he it was in the valley, and Jason didn't go to the valley back then. Jason's is like I'm too good. For uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, this know. is selling sunset, not selling you know Ventura. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so he um you know he brought uh Nicole on to it to help out, and and then apparently he brought Chriselle on. I didn't know like exactly how that played out. So I couldn't, it was so long ago, I couldn't say anything to it because they were both saying things that I was like, okay, well, I wasn't aware of either one of those. I was just like a bystander at that time. And so then when Nicole's saying stuff, I'm just sitting here like, I don't even know what to say. I wanted her to just stop because I knew what she was doing and I just didn't expect it. When Nicole was like venting to you, uh -huh. There, like I've seen, I've been a parts of these fights, like fights like this, where you were just kind of like sitting there, <laughs> you know. And I, I took your lack of saying any, like Nicole seemed to take your lack of response as basically accusing you of not having a backbone and being conflict adverse and things like that. I'm watching you and being like, Nicole, she doesn't agree with you. Like <laughs> she's just politely not telling you. That she thinks you're wrong. That was my read. Uh, yeah, I how how what what was what's the truth? Yeah, um, I was staying quiet because I I was just sitting there trying to think of how to say something to just squash it. Mm -hmm. Um, because this is not going to play out the way she thinks. She's new on the show. I know how it works. They're never going to just go one side. I mean, they're going to show certain parts of it from each side. And then let the people and, decide. Yeah. yeah. And and I was like, honey, they are not going to give all these like facts that you're doing because Krishal also has facts, too. They're just going to give like uh, snippets, like kind of thing of it. And and it's going to be up in the air for people to decide. It's not going to play out the way you think. And they're not going to make Krishal look bad. And if that's what you're trying to do, it's not going to. She's like, no, I'm not trying to make her look bad. I'm trying to say what happened. I was like, well, she says what happened, too. Do you think Chriselle is afforded a level of protection more so than any other? Do you, do you think different cast members get different levels of protection? No. No, I don't. Um, I, think, I think they're never going to make Chriselle look bad. That's for sure. Uh, well... They're being more honest about it, actually, because we just well, finished, would, we just finished season, filming seven. Uh, and, and I'm like, I feel like season like, five, Rochelle got, a, Rochelle got a little bit of heat. She got a little messy. Yeah. And I, almost, I mean that almost in a positive way, because I think to be on this show, uh -huh. right, over a period of time, that you lose a level of authenticity if, if any one character always comes across as pristine. Because right. as human beings, none of us are no one's without perfect. fault. And, yeah. and we all have a messy side. And mm -hmm. so I feel like we've seen a little bit of messiness from Chriselle in a, yeah. in a good way. Yeah. So yeah, it doesn't seem like she's above board or anything like that. Especially on this season, I think uh, they, we all just got a little more real. Yeah. Uh, I mean, no one, no one is perfect and, and none of us look, amazing all the time <laughs> you were saying season seven do you have a little bit of a teaser preview do you, does it get even messier i mean i think palm springs was am i allowed to say am i allowed to cuss Absolutely. oh uh, fuck shit Pulse, oh, yeah. oh okay yeah. okay yeah it was a full-on shit show i mean it was even the, what you guys see it was way worse they they were filming from the second we woke up to the second we went to bed for four days straight and i had just um I was I had to stop uh, the IVF, the embryo freezing, and so I was taking injections. I had to stop mid uh, like cycle to go on this trip. So I was like I hopped up on the hormones. I just got a call from my dad as I'm pulling in, where 
he was telling me a health thing that that he just found out. So I was like, what? Like, and and it sounds really serious. I didn't know what it was. So I was super worried about it. And the second I put in, they're like, okay, we got to get you mic'd up. And so in my head, I'm thinking about all of this. And then I was buying a house at the time. I was um, trying to move. And so it was a lot going on. And, you know, I'm just trying to put everything aside. And yeah, it just got really messy. And then all the girls were just going crazy. And, and I was trying to mediate everything even more than what even shows on the episodes. And yeah, I was over it. I was just exhausted. Was it kind of like there were distinct groups of girls or was it like everybody fighting everyone as individuals? No, it, uh, there were cliques. Yeah. Um, what are I, the cliques? Okay, so Krishan and Emma. I think Heather and Brie were getting along. Uh, Brie was fine. She's actually been really nice and gets along with everybody. I think Chelsea has been coming at her and Brie's not going to stand for it. Um, Why is then, Chelsea coming at Brie? I mean, it's just like, yeah. personally, I think uh, you do you. Nick Cannon's kind of yucky and gross. And, <laughs> you know, but that's just a... But, I, but you're not... You're not I mean, You're not fucking. That has nothing to do with Brie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, like that's her. Yeah. That's her prerogative. Like she has, sounds like a beautiful child. Yeah. And and oh my god, he's you know, so cute. I I hope I'm lucky enough to be a dad someday. Yeah. I certainly hope it's with my fiance Natalie. But like, who knows? Life comes at you fast. Yeah. It's weird, and I don't know if Brie should have to apologize right. for having a child in the manner of which she wants to have a child. Right. And, and I don't quite understand why Chelsea is coming at Brie for Nick Cannon's lifestyle choices. Right. Uh, I don't either. I just, I believe in people being happy. If, if she's okay with it, she's happy. It works for her. What's it to anybody else? Yeah. You're not living that life. You're not the one dealing with it. The baby's taken care of. It's very loved. And it comes over all the time. Brie's an incredible mother. I love people to live their own life. Be so, happy. So like, Nick, do you want people telling you how to live your yeah. life? So, so as far as you know, Nick, Nick is pretty present in yeah. that. How does he do it? How I does have he no idea. I don't know. He, he just had like another Santa fucking Claus. baby. How, yeah. It's like, how did Santa get to all those houses and in one night? I he's, know. He's hosting like every goddamn show on network television. Yeah. You it's know? insane. So it's like, yeah. yeah. He, he is, lives in some universe that has way more than 24 hours. And then. He's like, I, I have no idea because I don't have that much time. I try. And that's not nearly that much. <laughs> He's doing a lot. Are you aware of any conversations that Nick and Bree or, or I guess Nick in general, because I am fascinated about on this show, we talk about dating relationships a lot. Yeah. And a big thing we talk about is upfront expectations. Like whatever you want in life, uh -huh. however you live, yeah. you can solve a lot of those problems by just saying, listen, this is how, uh, how yeah. I operate. This is what I like. Judge me, call me weird, whatever. I'm just letting you know before yeah. we get into anything, this is how it works. Yeah. I'm assuming there's a little bit of that with with Nick Cannon yes. and these situations or pregnancies. That's Have you had any conversation with Bree about like the the discussion that he had with Bree about like getting pregnant and having a kid together? I don't know the actual discussion, but yeah, it was it was um it was very clear that this is the way it's going to be. And, and she was okay with that. That's, that's something that she actually wanted to, she didn't want to be married again. She wants, to, she's okay with it. That's, she was game. So. Yeah. I mean, listen, I, I bet there's a lot of women out there <laughs> who would love to like raise a child without the interference of some guy yeah. and, and be financially supported. And, and a lot of, for a lot of people that might be like an ideal situation. Yeah. Is it your opinion that when it came to like Chelsea's uh, kind of brokers open that she kind of is a little shady what she did to Brie? You know, Chelsea is very opinionated and she is very direct. But in that situation, I mean, Brie already gets so much hate from the world and, and people are always commenting because they don't get it. And people are very judgmental. And she's she's got like a backbone. She's just like. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So she can she can shrug it off, but she's kind of used to it. Um, she's very strong, but still, when it's someone that is right there in front of you and and you're working with, mm -hmm. it's like to keep getting it. She's just like stop. Do you think Chelsea can be a little self righteous? <laughs> I don't want to get. I yeah. Uh, I um, cough if you. 
guess. <laughs> <laughs> what? No. Um, no, I love Chelsea actually, but but I just think we all she's flaws. too opinionated. I mean, when it comes to someone else, she can have her own opinions, but that's fine. You don't always have to say it to the other person if you think it's going to hurt them. There's yeah. nothing. It's not going to change anything. Like if you're trying to do it to help somebody, then go ahead and say something to to try to change the situation or help. She's not going to help anything by saying this. She's just she's just so, attacking. Yeah, she's not saying anything to and, be like constructive. Cool she's not me. going to breathe yeah. like, hey, babe, like woman right. to woman. I really care about you. I hear you, about and you. And just like, have you yeah. considered X, Y or Z? She's yeah. just more like you're stupid. I disagree yeah. with you. <laughs> Yuck. While yeah. you're not here, I'm going to call your man like a manipulator or like the father of your child, a manipulator. Yeah. Like, what do you think of like because so much of it, you know, it's reality and you show your relationship with Romaine and everybody shows mm-hmm. their relationships on the show. So where do you guys kind of like draw that line of what it's fair to discuss about other people's personal lives and kind of mm. what stays on and off the cameras? You know, I end up if there's something very, very private and personal and I kind of know that that production's going to want me to talk about it. They hate me when I do this. Uh, I've been yelled at so many times, but um, but I call who, whichever cast member before and I'm like, hey, is there anything um, off limits like that? Because um, I know they're going to they're going to want us to talk about this. Um, so I end up calling them uh, just out of respect. So I, where I can touch on thing. everything else, yeah. but but I'm not going to do something that's going to like really hurt them and embarrass them if they told me something in confidence. Do you think your peers uh, give the same courtesy to everyone else or not? <laughs> um, I'm not. I, I <clears throat> no. don't. I no. don't know. Yeah, I don't know. know. <laughs> What's your opinion? I, I haven't heard of, of a lot of them doing that. OK. I think Heather, you're unaware. If right, it happens. I think Heather, I, Heather and I have talked about stuff before. Okay. You know, Chriselle. No, Chriselle actually called me um, and asked me about something before. Who's the most cutthroat? Like, who doesn't suffer any fools? Who is in it to win it for them? God, well, it used to be Christine. I would say, right now, I'd say Chelsea. I know a lot of people say Chriselle right now. Um, there's a lot of people that are, that are saying that, but I, I just haven't had that experience with her. Um, and so she's always been very respectful towards me. I've been respectful towards her. Yeah. It's one of like, you know, Chriselle is always, I mean, would you, it's interesting. Cause like I, as an outsider, I see it and you think everyone's a star, but then Chriselle's kind of like the protagonist. A yeah. Little bit. Yeah. You, I, like, <laughs> and I'm assuming there's, you know, a, a, a bit, some competition, you know, like, you know, being on reality, t- I've, you know, yeah. everyone's like, but I'm the star, you know, like, are, are, how do you feel about that? Are you comfortable with that? I would imagine other people on the show yeah. might get annoyed by the idea that Chrishell might be considered by many to be the star. And yeah. with being, you know, top dog, if you will, you uh. have a target on your back. Just like on The Bachelor, yeah. you get a first impression rose or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Amazon's like, oh, fuck, now everyone's going to hate me. That could be part of it. Yeah. I mean, where where people want to be in the limelight. They, people want to be the, um, like, basically the star. And and I think when the cameras turn on, everyone's defensive and trying to, like, make sure they look good. Mm-hmm. And so somehow that amps up the conversations or fights or whatever it is, because everyone's, like, just on edge, kind of, and, and it just exasperates what's going on, I think. Yeah. I really don't care. <laughs> I think maybe that's why I'm always getting along with people because I'm like, I don't really get, we're all stars of selling sunset. So it's like, I don't need to compete with you. If it comes yeah, to real estate, I'll compete for a listing. You seem to but, have a healthy approach. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like I'm still on the show. I'm still on as much as other people. I don't need to fight for uh, if, uh, what I don't know if I'm standing in the very front of our, our cast picture. I'm like, I don't care. Who, I'm just lucky for the opportunity. Who, I don't, <laughs> who does care? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't I love know. it when Mary, you know, Mary has a thought. She's, she's <laughs> like, she's just at the tip of her tongue. The diplomat. <laughs> the diplomat. Uh, Nicole seems like a highly intelligent person. She is. Yeah. She is very extreme and very thorough. That's why she's a really good agent. And... 
And, and well, until she came on Selling Sunset, it was hilarious to be around. I mean, because she's so extreme. She's a lot of fun. And Is she self-aware? Yes. I mean, she knows she's extreme. She laughs about it. She knows. She, she, knows. Okay. she knows. Yeah, she's very aware of it. And she jokes around about it. Um, and, and normally she's really, really fun and funny and just like, just a good time. So my question of highly intelligent, self-aware, uh-huh. it didn't just happen. She must have come in with some sort of plan, right? She's been around this show. Yeah. Not on the show for years. She's been a highly successful agent mm-hmm. at the Oppenheim Group, watching you all film, you know. And so when she got casted, I am assuming that she thought about her storyline, thought about what role she wants to play, thought about how, her character arc. Yeah. Like, why do you think she thought this would be the approach? You know, she, you guys lose Christine, you uh-huh. kind of lose your quote unquote villain. Do you think she was like, you know what, fuck it? <laughs> You know, Christine was a star, you know. You know, I think it was really, um, she came in, she thought, uh, because she works very, very hard, she is successful. Um, But I think she came in just wanting to show, like, I'm a badass. Like, I sell a lot of real estate. And and, and she's also very stubborn. And she, when she digs her heels in, she this is the way she feels about that situation. And when... I think production told her they're like, well, if there's like this this thing, talk about why, um, talk about that instance that you and Chriselle had before, so that um, so that the audience will know like what the history was, and so I think she just went into it telling her side of the story, but she gets very passionate about things. I mean, because she is an extremist, so when when it wasn't coming across, and this is just my opinion, when when I wasn't responding and just saying, yes, that's that's the way it happened, um, then she was trying to explain it more because she wanted, I think, the audience to know and viewers to know, like, this is this is what happened from her from her side. And I was like, honey, don't. Nope. Nope. Don't do this. Well, no no <laughs> but, pun intended, but it's yeah. almost as if Nicole, well, pun intended. Is it almost if Nicole feels like she's taking crazy pills because no one can understand yeah. her point of view because to her it's so yeah. obvious. Yeah. Yeah. And she's like a, a data driven shit talker. Like where for her, it's oh. like she's like, I'm going based off of facts. And so it seems <laughs> like when that feels disputed, she's like, My very reality is yes. being disputed as yeah. opposed to like a different viewpoint. Exactly. Yeah. So she was just, yeah, exactly. Curious what you think. Because, you know, I've of all the cast members, I suppose like you and Chriselle are the people I've gotten to know the most. Love Chriselle, love yeah. you. Seems great. I haven't got to meet Nicole or anything like that. The the, the storylines seem fishy from Nicole. That all being said, the accusation from Chriselle mm. about taking drugs. <laughs> My read on the situation was mm. is that Chriselle felt like Nicole was coming on the show and then attacking her credibility. Yes. And to me, it felt like Rochelle uh, bringing up the accusation of drugs wasn't because she actually thought Nicole was on drugs. Right. I think she wanted, in an almost kind of mean girl kind of way, to discredit too. her credibility by accusing her of being on yeah. drugs. What you, you would you agree? I think so because I talked I I talked to Rochelle afterwards and and they didn't show that, but I went to her room. It was actually before we all got my before we got mic'd up. I was sneaking in. I thought you were about to say before we all got mushrooms. I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <man." laughs> wouldn't that be a twist? Yeah. <laughs> no, I was like sneaking into their rooms, trying to like trying to get it calmed down so that mm-hmm. it wouldn't escalate anymore. I I was just like, girl, what are you doing? I was like, you can't say that. That is insane. You're you don't know that. I was like, why would you do that? That was so below the belt. And she's like, I know. I just like. But she was acting all weird. And, and the thing is, like, that is Nicole. We actually have emojis or whatever those m- meme things are of the those inflatable dolls or yeah. things <laughs> outside of, like, the car lot. <laughs> yeah. um, and her and her husband are both super tall, super lanky, Intense. very skinny, and the longest arms and legs you will ever see. And so, um, and they're both, when they talk, she's always been like that when she talks. And that's just her. But Chriselle also knows that because, again, like she said, she has invited her over. She's hung out with her for years. 
Um, I mean, not best friends with her, but but, but yeah. she knows her, and she knows like that Nicole's very very animated, and always has been. So I think it was just a dig, and and Chriselle's already you know apologized. And she has apologized. That. For yeah, that. she has. Okay. Yeah. What did you make of Nicole's decision to get a drug test afterwards? Because I think from her standpoint, you know, she made the point like we are business people. Like yeah. my brand has to do with like. I I mean, I was shocked by it and and I was saddened that she actually had to do that just to um to protect her reputation and prove. Because once you throw an accusation out there, especially in 2023, I mean, that, yeah, an accusation yeah. is just as bad as as um an actual fact on it because once you're accused that's in people's heads yeah people love an accusation they're not so much worried about the truth these days because yeah. accusation will spread like yeah. wild, wildflower it would be front page and yeah. then you know whatever, whatever the truth is and we you're live basically in a, guilty yeah, the we live in a time accused. unfortunately and we've said this on the show before that people be- don't believe facts they believe who they like the most yeah it, it's really sad so i actually think it was sad she had to do that but i think it was it was smart because she is um, real estate is everything to her and she, and it means a lot to her. So, uh, if her reputation is, um, damaged from this, she would be, she would be absolutely crushed. When you say Chriselle apologized, mm-hmm. was that off camera personal? Has she come clean, like on the internet to say, just so everyone knows, I never thought it was, uh, Nicole was on drugs. That was a that was a low character moment for me. I wish I didn't say that. Yada yada yada. Or was it just like, hey, sorry, babe, I shouldn't have said that. I get very confused all the time because I am around all these people. It's not just like when we're filming. And did things happen in my private life, like like the in front of blurred. cameras, yeah, or not? And Is then, season seven done filming? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So now I'm actually filming um, down in OC. I'm like um, so for selling on C. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm um, doing some guest appearances down there. Ooh, okay. I thought I was done. And <laughs> How are you liking that? Um, well, I love OC, and I actually because the the real estate market is so slow in LA right now that mansion tax has is like slowed everything down. Tell us about man- mansion taxes. Oh. So uh, we hate them, <laughs> especially on selling a sunset. Although, yeah, you're start, so, you're gonna sell, sell houses in the valley again. I, well, I live in the valley, so, uh, yeah. so I love it. I love it too. But um, anything five million and over, and you have an additional five and a half percent tax rate on it, and and ten million and over, it's like almost six percent. So people basically took their houses off the market. They're not putting them back on. Uh, we there were sales, I think, in March. 180 or so, somewhere around there um homes over five million that sold when uh, you mention like the you know it's out here like that's not a mansion that's a thing like uh, i i love my house <laughs> yeah. and you know i paid a it's a, it's like, a, house. a lot of money like, for it but like what that house in wisconsin would be a literal mansion like yeah. or what you know and it's kind of crazy that yeah. five million in la unfortunately yeah it doesn't get you what you would Mm-mm. think no no it does not and i mean it's you get a lot yeah. for it but um but yeah it's over and then so the number went down when it went into place march 31st the number went down to two homes sold over five million from 180 to two and so it's so slow right now with interest rates high and with the mansion tax yeah. so i'm going down to oc to start learning that market i mean i'm not moving down there but I'm going to go down there and start learning that market down there a bit more. So, what do you think about the cast people from that show? What do you what the guy? Who's I like Tyler. Is it Tyler? <laughs> I like. I mean, I don't know them that well. I know Polly, and and then I'm helping Kayla out with okay. a new listing of hers. So, yeah, I I don't know them that well. They're all cool with me, um, but when I've seen the show, I would not want to. I mean, I don't know. I'm not a drama person, as you guys know, and and there is a lot going on down there. Yeah, messy group. Yeah. yeah. Uh, any insight as to why Amanda unfollowed Rochelle? <laughs> oh, I have, I have the whole scoop. Yeah, I do. Um, you're gonna have to watch season seven for that one. <sighs> Could you give us a little something? Who who do you agree with? Pick a side, Mary. I I can't. I love them both, and and I think both of them have been right and wrong in in this whole thing. Could you give us a little bit more? I cannot. Netflix would kick my ass. <laughs> I, 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 will, I like my job. I, I Who can't. started it? <laughs> mm. 
<sighs> that's also oh, uh, that's also one that is very up in the air. I mean, I see. I'm in, I I see both sides because I I see when people do things and I see how things can get twisted and and they both in this situation thought they were doing something right or they didn't think they were doing something wrong. They thought that they were doing the right thing in a situation. Things didn't work out so well. That's all I know. Okay. Okay. <laughs> or, or all I'm going to say. Do you think Jason's I need my job? No, yeah, yeah respect it. You know, just trying to do mine. <laughs> yeah, so, I know. Yeah, I, yeah. I know. Uh, do you think uh, Jason's going to marry uh, Mary Lou? No. Do you think he's going to marry anyone? No. But not for a very long time. Uh, um, it would have to be, he'll, he won't even consider it until he's probably do you, 60. Do you think it's a healthy relationship? He and Mary Lou? Yeah. Yeah, it is. I think the distance between them, because she has to go back and forth for work. What's your favorite and least favorite thing about her? My favorite? Uh, I, I think she's very classy. Um, okay. She's uh, very, m- very mature for her age, and, um, and she makes him happy. And I don't really have a least favorite. She's a, she's a wonderful person. You like her? Okay. Yeah. Uh, when Jason went on vacation for three weeks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How did you feel? About, like, where do you fall? You clearly have a loyalty to Jason. <laughs> yeah. Last time you were here, you have a history with him. You, you have, it seems like you have nothing but nice things to say about him. But it, from an outsider looking in, he, he seems to be, he's, he's not seem he doesn't seem to be super excited about ever admitting he's wrong. Um, especially to people who work for him and uh, in someone in your position who's running the office do you find that to be incredibly frustrating at times and how do you handle managing Jason's ego uh, with the rest of the group I think they've rewatched the show because I I guess I don't see Jason the way the public sees him? I, I don't know. Maybe I took it what, a different it, way. What's because, the misconception then? Um, but because I, I feel like he does stuff for me too. Like if I am leaving or if I'm doing something, we're just really good friends. And and between our assistants and, and him, if I have like a listing or something going on and I have to leave town, uh, I'll just say, Jake, would you mind like helping out with this? Just make sure it's on track. Now mm-hmm. I have my assistant. I, I have a full real estate assistant that does it. So I don't really need him. But he would always be there for me if I needed him to. So I feel like that's what he was doing in that moment. He didn't realize or when he when he's in love, he is truly in a love bubble. It's like the emojis with like little hearts in their eyes and he doesn't hear anything. He's just like walking around like like with the little hearts in his eyes. And so I don't think he was really thinking it through like how much work that was going to be because he knows when I when I do something I typically just make it happen. I figure it out. And so I think that he thought that that's what it was going to be because my husband was doing the passes anyway. He's like, no, just manage to make sure everything's running and and like keep in touch with Romain, make sure everything's done and do the staging and do this and and then with his other properties and then take care of all the agents. And then I still had all my listings and my buyers. And then it was just, it was a lot. And I was trying to do the embryo freezing and, and buy a house and all that stuff. And so it was a lot. And I don't think he was thinking about that. He was just thinking on the things he he gave me to do. He's like, no, you can handle that. Fine. Has Jason ever come to you and said, hey, my bad. I, I, I maybe. Yeah. He, he has. He, he's good. Okay. He, he can he admit he's wrong. Oh, yeah. 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 He's actually very good. We both are very good about that with each other. We are not mad at each other for probably more than. I would say an hour. I mean, we've gotten in like yelling matches on the phone and it's always about work um, or a client. And it only takes like an hour where we're like, you're disrespectful. You're entitled. Da, 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 and, it, and like yelling back and forth. And I'm like, I'm not talking to you anymore on this. Like and hang up. He'll call me back. I'm like, I said, I'm not talking. <laughs> and so we'll do that. And then and then I, I would say within half an hour to an hour, he's like, I'm sorry. I just felt like. Like, you were disrespecting me. I love you. I'm sorry. I was like, I know. I'm sorry, too. I didn't mean to, to you know, hang up on you and yell at you. And, and so it, it takes, it doesn't, we're never mad at each other. So even, except, you know, we'll say stuff like that. Like, where I'm like, I'm not doing that. You're a dick. Like, no. Like, yeah. <laughs> like screw um, you. I'm not doing it. <laughs> when it comes to the TV show. Yeah. And 
what I'm very fascinated about selling Sunset and or shows like say Vanderpump. Are you watching? Are you familiar with anything going on with Sand Sandoval? No, I have no idea what this is. I get Google alerts about like um, right. about selling Sunset and stuff to make sure I'm not missing something. But I keep seeing you gotta watch all that stuff, and I have no clue what this. What's it called again? This Scandoval. Scandoval. You yes. gotta watch, Mary. I've been, really, but I don't. Is it a lot of drama? It's the best reality TV. Really. In, in oh, history of TV. Huh. No, I'm sorry. And I've, as, as someone who's, you know, been a part of some really good reality TV. You hurt my feelings. I, I apologize. <laughs> but like, this is next level. Really? Drama? Yeah, drama. And just like, it's re it's just so real and so personal. And there's just so many layers of just kind of relatability. And I think really? that, yeah, it's, it's, if you're looking for like a good watch, you know, I would, uh, I would Dr recommend. Normally the draw like reality shows I don't normally watch, which it sounds weird that I'm on one and I don't really do it because there's so much drama. I don't like that. I'll watch reality as far as like like home flipping shows and and there's else? something about Oh, I like Love is Blind. You do? Yeah, I do. I do like that. What did it, you think of uh the last season? <gasps> I loved it. <laughs> oh my god. I and I just went to a Netflix event and what was what was his name? Brad Brad? Brad? Yeah, the oh my gosh, they're the cutest couple. Yes. And I saw I saw them. I was like, oh, and I never do this. And most of the time I don't even know who people are, like when I go, because it's like you could be like the top person on a show, but I don't first of all have time to watch that much TV. And then also I don't know what some of the reality shows are. Yeah. Um, like I watch Bridgerton and Queen Charlotte, stuff like that. But so I saw them, but I didn't know who they were. And I ran up to them. I'm like, I'm sorry. I never do this. I love you guys. I'm so happy you guys are still together. You were like, it was so genuine. And so just like you could feel a real connection there. And they never got dirty with it. They never got disrespected each other or even had to question it. And even when they went up and got married, it, you know how most time they wait and, and you can tell they're like either trying to decide or, or trying to leave it hanging. They weren't even doing that. They were both like, Yes, yes, and like dying to do it. I was like, I love that. I love you guys. Did you get to meet uh, <laughs> Chelsea and Kwame? Yes, I did. What did your what? Do they like each other? They were there together. I don't know. Like I saw they walked in together. I didn't really talk to them that okay. much. I I I talked to them individually, but he was walking around. Um, talk. <laughs> He was walking around talking to people and she, she was, was sitting down. Yeah. She was sitting down with the um I, I forget her name, but with one of the other girls. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Anyway, the reason yeah. why I brought that sh uh, all this all up uh, yeah, in the first place we is like um <laughs> Well, it's just that like you kind of mentioned earlier, just like you're filming a TV show about your literal life. Mm -hmm. And you are in life a very successful real estate agent who's running an office and they're filming a show about the office. Is it a challenge to turn that off and on, especially for people like you and Jason who are running an office? Because I have to assume there are some decisions that are real estate decisions, mm -hmm. and then there are some decisions that are more selling sunset decisions. Yeah. Yeah. I how think... do you manage that? And then how do you uh, manage the expectations of the cast people? And Oh, here's a way I can ask. I'm from The Bachelor, we have this trope, yeah. and it's the trope is, who's there for the right reasons? The right reasons being love on The Bachelor. Right. Selling Sunset, right reasons being real estate, right. I would assume. So who's there for the right <laughs> reasons? Um, uh, and who's there more for fame and glory? I'm there for the right reasons. We know that, and, Mary. And <laughs> Jason's there for the right. I don't. I'm not going to answer that. But it does get. Um, but there are it does people get, who maybe aren't have the same motives. Would you say they are not? Some people are not as motivated in real estate. It, it's not their end all be all like like thing. And, and with selling sunset being a perk, um, in my opinion, I mean it. It's a the show isn't forever, and it's not. Um, I wish it. Could be, but reality is it's not going to last forever. I mean, so, seven and seasons is incredible. I Just know. Yeah. I know. I, I, I'm told. I, I mean, I, I think this is true because it was Netflix. 
I believe that actually told us this. Maybe someone else passed us already, but season eight, um, if we get picked up for season eight, will be the longest running reality sh- or the longest running show ever on Netflix. On Netflix. Wow. Because I, yeah, Queer Eye just came out and I think they're right around where you're at. Did they hit eight? I don't, oh, I, did I, we they're get cl- the- they're, they're around. I, Is it seven it's or eight? It's six, seven or eight. It's something. They're, they're, you guys are very close. Yeah. Okay. Oh, see, this is where I'm competitive. I'm like, oh, please be seven so we they're can hit eight seven. first. Yeah, it appears. They're on seven. Okay. They're on seven. Oh, then if ours hasn't come out yet. Oh, I bet they're, so they're they're eight will come out you, before. But... Ooh. Okay. But I think they've I think they've also been around longer. They ha- oh, they've so been around a lot longer. Off. Yeah. Yeah. You're at a, you're you're on pace. Uh-huh. Sounds like to to pass. Hopefully. Them. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> you seem obviously very level headed about all this. For the people who are more real estate driven than show driven, do they get more upset? Like, is, does that create a lot of the drama? Like, is that maybe is that part of the reason that Nicole and Chriselle got into it? Yes, probably. Yeah, I think so because, um, well, I think it's Nicole's personality anyway. But to just be very like, she takes her her clients and 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 her work seriously, and and she's very prideful of that and and so i think she's fighting for just recognition of her work Mm -hmm. um that was just a weird situation with it was like intertwined but um but i think that yeah i think if something happens i do get uh frustrated with the girls because that is a brokerage reputation that we've worked very very hard to to um you know build and and have like a luxury brand with good agents and when i see cat fighting and drug accusations and lawsuits i'm like what are you guys doing this makes us all look bad like this is not making us look like a luxury agency i mean you got this is this is terrible so i do get upset about yeah. it but I, i'm also not going to get in to to the mud with them on it sure, i mean because yeah. then but, but how am i how am i doing anything any better you're right i mean you're you're, you're talking about multi-million dollar transactions if you're going to buy a house and, and hire real estate and pay a hefty commission you right. need to trust and respect and and think that your agents are above board yes and mature mm-hmm. and yeah i guess i if i would wa- i i suppose <laughs> i'd be if i was watching this show i'd be like i don't know if i want some of these people like running the running my transaction here right. like uh yeah you, you definitely can put yourself there's a balancing act for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's why when uh, a lot of times people criticize about the way I manage and stuff, but I'm not going to get in the dirt with them. I'm also not a kindergartner, a kindergarten teacher. I'm not a therapist. I am a real estate manager and I'm managing and, and helping with real estate transactions and answering questions. And, and if they need something, going to the houses, helping them comp a property, doing stuff like that. I didn't know I was going to be mediating cat fights. And that's not what I signed up for. That's not what our brokerage is supposed to be about. So when I would sit there, I'm like, just stop. Because I'm like, they're grown adults. I mean, I can't physically make them stop without like tying them down or something like and and putting duct tape on their mouth. I mean, they're they're adults. They're the ones that are going to say and do whatever they want. And and unfortunately, at the end of the day, their actions also reflect back on our on the whole brokerage yeah. not just on them as a director of the office what uh if you were giving like a, a one-on-one coaching opportunity mm-hmm. you know like you know you do with your employees uh-huh. like what are areas of improvement when it comes to being a real estate agent would you like to see emma make emma yeah um <laughs> like what what coaching notes would you give her if it, if this show well i know for this show but this is also she wouldn't normally, I don't think, wear such short, um, short skirts and stuff like that. But on this show, everyone like amps it up a, a bit, like oh, with you know, Chelsea, steps it up. With Chelsea's but... outfit, where it looked like she couldn't move. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, with the, with the skirt. <laughs> <laughs> I have no. Yeah, I I'm always surprised because I'm not in every every scene with them, and when I see it, and I'm like, what was that? I was like, how in the world did she think she was gonna move in that? But you know, it, it makes a good show. So. That's your only note? Uh, for Emma, um, 
Yeah, I love Emma. I mean, I think I, I think no, I, I, I would I would Emma. say that. I asked like what 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 if you I love Amanda, but I might sit her down and say, "Hey, listen, you know, like I would love you to work on X, Y, or Z." Like a compliment sandwich situation where yeah. you're like, "You're so good at this. I would love to see you push yourself more in this area." Yeah. But a reminder, you're also so good at this. Like, oh, um, yeah, compliment no, sandwich. I Emma, I guess I don't really, I don't really have. I have, I would compliment sandwich uh, some of the other people, but Ooh, I, I don't okay. really have. I just, I just um, much we criticism about Emma, for so Emma. I, figured, yeah. I think she's a sweetheart. Who, who would you compliment <laughs> sandwich? Keep... Okay. Uh, I'm going to get myself in trouble, man. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, probably Chelsea. Um, uh, I think I really, res- I really respect her directness and, and, and honesty. However, she really needs to just um, stay out of other people's personal business and and not try to hurt people and stop coming after my job. And uh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, um, and then, um, but she is. She's also um, ambitious. So. Um, so I do respect that side of her too. So I forgive her. her ambition. Yeah. I forgive her for trying to come after my job, but I don't feel she would be the right personality to be a manager because she's so opinionated and you can't throw your personal opinions and lifestyle onto your employees. Yeah. Um, and get in fights with them about it. So she would almost I, maybe create a bigger divide in the office. Than, yeah, I, that's my that's my opinion. And no um, disrespect to Chelsea. No, but I given love Chelsea. your relationship with Jason, it seems laughable that she would mm. come for your job because right. it seems like you, you're on pretty <laughs> solid footing I, with with the boss. Like you've I was worked pretty, for so long. Yeah, I was. And she's, I was pretty and Chelsea's surprised when I new. when I saw the show. I was like, that's bold. Okay, I was you, like, you I did know not that. know that that happened. No, I did oh, not so know you, that. Oh, so you you realized know. that Chelsea was coming for your job uh-huh. when we found uh-huh. out Chelsea was coming for your job. So it did. Damn. <laughs> did you like? Did you in your mind were you like, how would I address this with her? Like, what kind of went through your? Like, yeah, the first how time did you, you address her? that with her? I haven't really. I mean, she didn't get my job, so I mean, <laughs> but you didn't. Like, I know what happened. You didn't like reach out to her or sit her down and be like, so. No, you know, I watch it. If it's something big enough, um, I, I like to sit with my with my emotions and thoughts before I go to somebody with them. I'm not going to just call her up and How be like, of you? bitch. Da, da, da. I, I mean, because I'm like, OK, there's there's part of it where, uh, you know, if she thought I wasn't doing a good job. um. I don't know if she was amping stuff up and joking or or if she really is because she's she's I don't um, think she would turn it down. No, I don't think she would turn it down. But I think I, I don't know how much of it was kind of amped up. So I, I just want to think about it for a while. I probably won't even say anything because it doesn't really matter. Do at the you end think of the day. Uh, a lot of your peers when they get, say, caught in the fire, blame it on TV? Be like, oh, I just did it for the show. <laughs> well, I do hear that a lot. You do, but <laughs> yeah. Um, but I mean, I think I like. I think a lot of times it's true. Okay. Um, but sometimes, sometimes it could be a cop out. Okay. I'm curious in watching back and seeing Chriselle's side of the story, where she felt like after her breakup with Jason, like that there'd been some distance in your friendship. Yeah. What's kind of your take on that period of time? And also, one of the things Chriselle mentioned was like not wanting to meet G who we had the pleasure of meeting. So can you kind of speak to that whole process and where you're at now? Well, that part was not true. I, I have met, I met G many times. I was just at their house. Um, we're, we're, we're friends. Um, I think what she was talking about is when they break up and you're in such a tight group, like we are, and it's so intertwined. It made it very, very difficult because if we're going to go out, it's like you have to pick and choose which one you're going to invite. You can't, you can't just, hang out with both of your friends and so you have to like take turns and so you split you lose half the time with the person that you would normally get and then I was actually dealing with a personal like family emergency kind of situation at that same time um I'm so I believe- sorry yeah thank you but um and then I was uh I think that's when I was also doing embryo freezing I think it was either right before or after that 
So there was a, it was very busy. And then she uh, went to Mexico with Emma and then she and she was traveling a lot. And then Romaine and I came back. We started traveling and then she met G. And so it was like there was this time period where it wasn't like we were intentionally not seeing each other or I, at least I wasn't intentionally not seeing her. I did see her multiple times, but it just was not to the extent of what we used to hang out and, and how much we used to talk. And I didn't really realize that. So I I I called her even the other day after I watched the show. I was like, babe, I'm so sorry if you if you felt this way. I I'm sorry. I did not mean to ever make you feel like that. I thought that we were both just doing our own things because I was busy. And when I get busy and I'm in my head, I'm not that kind of friend that that checks in and calls every day. It's like, how are you? What are you wearing today? Um, what'd you eat? Like, I just don't like I'm busy. If there's something that's going on, I'm like, hey, let's hang. Or if there's if there's something wrong and someone's upset or there's something, call me, tell me. I will drop everything and be right there. Um, if you just want to hang, let me know if you feel like we're not. But I'm just not one to like FaceTime every day, text every day, just to chit chat. I talk and talk and talk all day long. When I'm done, I just want silence. I just want to, if I have downtime, I just want to veg out, turn on a good show and just zone out. Otherwise, you know, I'm doing stuff around the house. I'm dealing with whatever personal stuff. And so I'm just not a chit chatter normally. Yeah, I, I'm a loner kind of when I get home. I'm a homebody I and, and I don't like yeah. going I really don't like going out just like to party you. at a at a lounge and stuff. I'm like, you guys can come to my house. I was like, <laughs> I, I, I'm I'm cool. I'll throw I'll do a barbecue, but I don't really want to just Where where's your nightclub. relationship with the Nicole stand now? We're friends. We're friends. Yeah. We talked throughout that. Even when we were disagreeing on that, uh, I would call her and I'm like, babe, you are putting me in a very difficult position right now. I was like, I love you so much, but this is you're making this very hard on me. I'm frustrated. And and she's like, I get it. She's like, I'm frustrated too. She's like, but we're good, right? I was like, we'll always be good. I'll always love you. But please just let, let this be squashed. <laughs> I was like, I don't want this. I love Chriselle too. So um, like, I don't want Are they, to see this. They don't seem to be. No, they're not okay. Do you think they'll ever get to a point? No. <laughs> what would need to happen? Nothing. It's not even possible. Who hates the other person more? I think Rochelle's more stubborn um, where she, when she, well, I, I don't know if stubborn, so not in a negative way, but if she puts up a wall, you're not breaking that, that wall down. Once you, once you cross her, she's done. She's like, she will have nothing to do with you. It's like going back is not, I, I've never seen that wall be broken down, hmm. but it's just a, it's just a, a protective, like um, a kind of thing. I think if if she's been burned in the past, she knows she's like not getting it again. <laughs> so, I mean, I understand. Um, I understand Chriselle pretty well, I think. You know, it takes a while for her to let her guard down when she first meets people. And for the most part, I'm the same way. Uh, I don't just go and hang out and start talking, telling my life story to some random, my, like my friend's new girlfriend that he's been dating for a week. I'm like, I'm not going to tell you deep dark secrets i don't trust sure. you <laughs> yeah, I, I, can't, I don't imagine they would ever be like super tight but you don't think there's a world where one of them might say hey listen like we obviously aren't best friends we maybe don't even say eye to eye but like coexist yeah i don't i i don't have a hatred towards you. like just right now there seems to be an active mm. hatred like they are both investing their own emotional energy to yeah. really dislike the other and yeah. I think there's that. And then there's just accepting that, like, we're just never going to be best friends, but like, co we can coexist and like, yeah. whatevs. I think the digs have to stop first yeah. from both sides. Um, They have to stop hitting below the belt, stop like doing a little jabs and like with whatever. And, and then they will be able to just coexist without like the so much animosity. But after whatever season six there's just still been stuff going on here and there i mean they tried but then one of the there's something that comes up and i think with press you probably know this like with press too you can read a headline you think mm. you're getting over it and then the show comes out and you've got all these headlines and you see something and and you're like okay all right like you said this well usually what happens back. Though, and then and it's like 
the person didn't even say it. Exactly. Well, usually that's what I'm saying. Usually, what happens is you get some pulled quote from like a podcast or some sort of uh-huh. interview, and the headline is, you know, something that's pretty out of context. Oh yeah, or, absolutely. Or just like a fraction of what it actually is. Mm-hmm. And I mean, shit, I have this happen to me all the time. You know, we talk about so many shows and we share a lot of strong opinions. Yeah. And then, you know, some fan of someone else would be like, did you hear what Nick or so-and-so said to you on the vinyl files? And, you know, we might like have a critique. Yeah. Followed up by like, but like, they're awesome and we see this and we understand, but they have no idea Uh of that. And they're just like, you know, and they they will read the headline that some fan will send them and then like form their entire opinion about what was said without ever going back and listening or reading the article. That happens all the fucking time. Oh, yeah, it does. Like when I've read stuff before and, and at least when I see something that's like, what the hell? Yeah. I was like, what is going on? And so I read it. I'm like, there was nothing about that. Yeah. It, nothing about it in the in the actual article. And But it, I think you just read it and you're like, all right, fuck you then. It's yeah. like, and, and then you lash back and, and it's totally. like, no. I, I, I learned that. I mean, that yeah. used to, you know, I would get fans being like, did you hear what so-and-so said to you? And then you get all rattled mm-hmm. and then like you go back and look and be like, that what? What? Like that wasn't... <laughs> <laughs> where do they get that oh you yeah know? and uh yeah so i just i don't even pay attention now just because i assume it's yeah it's it's a fraction of of the stuff that goes out there it's like you do one interview and then people will take stuff from that and then they get stuff wrong then people take it from that and then there's like 20 news outlets that are all printing completely different things based oh, yeah. on one that i did and i'm like Okay, well, first of all, like there are so many things, even just me personally, they they have like uh where I'm from, my age, my son, Romaine. I'm I'm apparently still dating Romaine and, and we don't even live together yet. And and That's weird. Yeah, I'm from North Dakota or South Dakota. I'm uh thirty nine and, and like there's all these different facts and they change all the time. And I'm like, don't you have to fact check? I, was like, I don't I think don't they know, do anymore. I no, really. Uh, well, that's obvious now. Really, you would yeah. think they really should. Don't. Or yeah, they'll just or they'll create a new story. Mm. Like I, uh, Nally and I did uh, uh, the Lotners podcast. Uh, okay. And we were just talking about a relationship, and not uh, you know, it was kind of a, a d- disappointing because in, in that podcast, now he's being very vulnerable about some trauma she experienced in the past, and and then we kind of told this anecdotal story about how we met, which I've actually told the story before. I told on the show about how. She slid into my DMs, and I don't think you can be too safe on the internet. So I, <laughs> I talked about how, like, when I, I carded her the first time, like, we FaceTime together. And it was, I carded her because, like, catfishing. Cat, yeah. Catfishing is a real thing. And, I, you know, because there's an age, you know, I'm a bit older than Natalie. Everyone made it seem like I was making sure she was, like, of legal age and shit like that. Oh and I'm like, that's God. not why I fucking carded her. I just wanted to make sure that she was an actual fucking person. Yes. And not, like, John <laughs> yeah. from, like, North Dakota. Right. You know? And so and they turned into some whole other thing. And it was, like, oh super upsetting. And, like, and it was all because of the headlines yeah. that they... They they put out there and yeah. and you know and, and it was that was real shitty just because the episode was about it was something important something and then personal it got turned and into like something. and it kind of turned into some this gross salacious uh. thing it, yeah it was kind of frustrating but what do you, the world we live in unfortunately it, it is yeah um you have been you know, open and vulnerable uh about re- you experienced a miscarriage yeah I'm so sorry to hear about that thank you you know for the we have obviously a lot of women who listen to the show um. That's a very vulnerable thing to happen. What is that experience? I mean, I may assume difficult and hard, but with you and Romaine, has that in some ways brought you closer together? How as a couple have you guys managed this obviously very, um, you know, emotional situation? And yeah, like going forward, how have you guys dealt with something like that that can, can be so difficult and be so challenging? You know, you've mentioned several times in this interview about you know, freezing embryos and things like that. What's that been like for you? And, and how have you guys handled that as a couple? Well, it's been it's been a nightmare. It was way more difficult than I thought it was going to be. Um, I don't really know what happened. I never even I knew it was a possibility. And I 
I did not let myself believe it. Um, I was just like, nope, power of positive thinking, putting it out there, going to be successful, happy. And I really didn't even um, allow myself to to think that the, that it could happen. And so it was even more shocking. And and unfortunately, we found out at at the doctors because I went in for another um, ultrasound. So it wasn't like I just had a spontaneous miscarriage. I went in and and they told me that like uh, the baby had stopped growing from basically from the last appointment. Um, so it had been like a couple weeks um, before. So I was just carrying around like like the baby. And, and so they, they were like, we have to we have to do a DNC. And and so that was just it was it was heartbreaking and Romaine didn't understand what was going on right then what that meant that it wasn't like that it stopped growing he was like okay so how do we get it growing um like and and i was like baby no like the baby died like it, it like and he was like and and trying to tell him that like i could see just like the confusion i'm like how do i say this like i i was just in shock i didn't process it um in the beginning it took me a while to be able to talk about it Um, it was just a a lot more painful than I thought. And then, um, and then I didn't stop. Of course, I, I just throw myself into work. And so I was still like, I think two days after I, um, I was supposed to have the DNC, but ended up naturally miscarrying on that morning. So I was like, just leave me alone. I'm just staying at home. I'm not coming in. I'm just going to do it naturally. And it ended up turning septic. And so I had to go in for surgery. Um, because I guess like it, everything didn't kept like whatever naturally and and so but I kept going and I kept working it was like two days later I presented an award at like um for like a beauty award like uh thing and then I went to Cabo for filming and then we got back and I was doing my uh selling sunset cashew like the one that you see up there and so I was like I was that day took everything I had um to to just be there because I was literally shaking I just thought I was run down and and I was um I just wasn't doing well um and just needed to rest because I'd been go 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 and yeah so um I just started shaking and and just sweating but like just I mean full on like almost like spasming almost and they were like, girl, you you do not look good. You need to go home. Um, but I'm trying to do all those interviews for it. And and like in the photo shoot, I'm like, give me a second. And I'm shaking. I'm like, one, two, three. And and I try to like stand and like hold myself from shaking. And I'm like, okay. And I wrap up in a blanket. And <laughs> it was so brutal. And then I found out the next day that um I called the I had my assistant call my doctor and be like, what is going on? And she's like, oh my God, get her now or take her to the ER. And so she was like, it's really, really dangerous. Um, like you can die from it, I guess. And 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 so she wanted me to go in right away. And so, yeah, I had to go in for surgery. Well, I'm sorry you had to experience yeah. that. Yeah, it sucked. But, but you know, I'm over it now. I, I kind of stayed. I, I hid away and processed, worked from home for, I don't know, for about a month or so. Mm-hmm. Um, just to not have people ever like that did know constantly and, and they're being sweet but that's one of the things when you're when you're going through something and still emotional and and I know that people are trying and they really do feel bad they're like oh I'm so sorry I'm so sorry and then it you Kinda know you're trying up. to get yeah. your your mind off of it like to just get through the day and then they say it and you're like thank you yeah. <laughs> like, but so it's like no I don't want to cry I don't want to like and and I would just you know, I had my days where I all I did was cry, and in and some days I'm like, "Nope, we're not doing this today. We're moving forward. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. It happens to so many people. I'm not the only one. Be a big girl. Move on." How's Romain? <laughs> how about how's Romain been with all of it? Uh, he's the most supportive guy ever. Like he, I, I, I'm so lucky. He he's like that every single day, but especially in this situation. I couldn't have asked for a more supportive and loving husband. He's been awesome. How do you um, find the balance? Because like with all of my friends who have had fertility struggles, like it's just this like deeply isolating and challenging experience and it can go on for so long and it requires so much mental stamina. How do you find the balance between like having hope 
while also not like kind of maintaining expectations to not be, have this crushing disappointment yeah. be too frequent. I'm still working on that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, uh, I'm trying to decide right now if, because we, when we did the embryo freezing, it was not successful the first time. And then the second time we went through half of it and I had to cancel for the Palm Springs trip and then got pregnant naturally. And so then I'm looking at it now, like I don't want to go through that again, which is not, I, I, I mean, not that that's actually going to happen, but, um, but I think that the better outcome it would be if we just did try another round of embryo freezing. So we know that we have good um, embryos first, instead of just winging it and trying, hoping because at my age, I mean, I'm 42. And so it's, the chances go down and the longer we try, the less eggs and, and quality it's going to be. So I don't know. I'm trying to make that decision. And we've been so busy. I haven't had time just to go do the IVF, um, which is, I think, what the smartest decision is. But we just don't have the time right now. So maybe maybe July when we're back in town. OK. Yeah. Try not to put too much pressure on myself and totally and stress myself out about it because that's not going to help anything. Do you have any fun summer plans lined up for you? Going on a girl's trip with like Nicole will be but there. Um, we used to go every year to, with a couple other girls that aren't on the show um, to Tulum. And then uh, I am going to Vancouver, but that's that's kind of a work thing. And then Romaine's birthday is on the 18th. He's going to be 30 um, and, and like the 30th of June. And so I don't know how long till this comes out. So I can't say because it's a surprise yeah, if he hears it next Tuesday. Okay, then I can't say where, but you guys will see it on, on yeah. social media or something, whatever. But we're planning a, a big uh, 30th birthday party for him. And then we're taking his parents to Italy. So his mom has a, has something coming up, a medical thing coming up. So we want to make sure that, that before she goes in for that, we get to spend a lot of time with her. And it's been about a year or so since we've actually... A year and a half since we've been back there. He FaceTimes them every day, but or not every day. Oh, that's three, that's times a good a, son. three three times Still a week. Pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Three no, times he, a week. He is a good yeah. His family's very, very close and he loves his mom um dearly. He he FaceTimes her all the time. But she's lovely. I love his family. That's awesome. So, yeah. It'll be a fun trip. So we're going to Italy, uh, to Florence. Fun. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. Mary, I feel like we could talk for hours. Uh, <laughs> this has been so fun. Yes. Thank you for being such a delight as always. You're welcome back anytime. Thank Congratulations you. on all your success. Thank you. And thank you for sharing some fun selling sunset <laughs> tea. We're excited to see season seven. It sounds like it's going to be. It's going to be good too. A messy, messy season. We love Matt. We love a mess. I know. Yeah. I, I we love mean, watching a mess. It keeps happening. So I guess that's why we keep getting renewed. Yeah. <laughs> do you think it just, well, well actually, one more question. Do yeah. you think it's, do you, you know, when you said you started this interview being like, oh, we thought there was going to be no drama. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like there's like, do you think it just comes out naturally? Or do you think there are people who are just like, felt like, well, Christine left and I want to take up the mantle of, they, like, they saw an opportunity for that role. Do you, which I... one do you think it is? No, it's happening. It's happening naturally. I'm like, I'm back here watching it from the sidelines and I'm like, where did that come from? And and both people are like, it, it's organic. Like I'm watching both of them. Like the fuck. Like yeah, like and they're both like like not expecting whatever it was. Like and and it's happening organically. But again, I think I think everybody is kind of just trying to defend themselves more. So and then when we talk to press and it, like the issues never die, so it keeps snowballing into other things because you know after you watch it you find out stuff that you didn't know before and then you're doing press and then it digs up the old wounds from stuff you did know about and then whatever the person says is offensive so that stirs the pot and it just keeps going and so and then new stuff happens so i don't know all right it's a shit show <laughs> well we love a shit show mary <laughs> uh, can you please let my audience know where they can find you follow you anything you want to plug or promote please do so sure yeah uh you can find me on social media instagram uh the mary bonet being on tiktok too um and then yeah i've got i've got links to a bunch of other things on there too for my handbag line and and a couple other things i'm working on amazing 
Yeah, I'll, I'll add those to it when I get announced. Well, great to see you. You're always yeah. welcome back. Thank you guys so much for listening. And as always, don't forget to send in those questions at asknick at com for all things Ask Nick. Also, we have an update classic that dropped last Friday. We have an update special dropping this Friday on Vile Files Plus. So for all the people who are loving those updates and who haven't signed up for Vile Files Plus, go to vilefiles.com to do so. It's free for seven days. No excuses. It's rated amazing and awesome. Be sure to check it out. We will see you back tomorrow. Bye. Hey guys, if you loved what you listened to, make sure you hit that subscribe button below. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.